Now, the second of our story is on the rising costs of higher education. Last night, it was the burden of growing student debt. Tonight, the matching effects on public colleges and universities. John Tulenko of Learning Matters Television, which produces education stories for the News Hour, has our report. Back in September, Christina Hofses was starting college. <laughs> First time away from home. Go ahead, push. But she wasn't moving into a college dormitory. Her home is five miles off campus at a La Quinta motel. Christina's College, Montclair State University in New Jersey, is housing some 200 students here after running out of room in dorms. I definitely imagine going to campus, staying, into, staying in a dorm. I want that bed. OK, we well, your first one here, so that works. But there's just so many students. Enrollment is surging at the nation's 643 public colleges and universities. That's a result of tough times. Montclair State's president, Susan Cole. When people are losing their jobs, being laid off, um, uncertain about what the economy is going to bring, they turn to higher education in order to prepare themselves better to compete. About 60% of students have turned to public colleges, increasingly because of the price. Tuition and fees that average just $6,500 a year. When I was looking for schools, my dad was at work. At the time, I knew that it was slightly tight and that we needed to be efficient in where we were looking. Students are also transferring in from private colleges. I came to Montclair because it's about half the cost. How much did you save? Probably over $20,000 a year. The loans were obscene. Public colleges are turning away tens of thousands of qualified students. Those who've gotten in are straining the system. How many of you had difficulty getting the classes that you wanted? That's a lot. It's revolving doors to get into classes. They tell you when you can register for classes and everyone has their laptop and they're waiting for, for your time to be able to register for class and everyone, it's like ready, set, go. How many classes that you wanted were you able to get into? Two. Out of? Five. How do you feel about that? I'm very angry about that, honestly. <laughs> Paying this money and taking classes that I don't want to take, that I don't feel, you know, like I want to take at all, but I have to in order to graduate. But of course, it actually could slow you down. Yeah. There are many instances where students are prevented from graduating because they don't have one or two classes. Enrollment at Montclair State increased by 5% this year to 17,400. More students means more large classes. So we're back to A. ABA is also known as what? How many students are in your class? 101. Steph? Do you have many classes like that? I've had 130 in my class, and uh, it was really, it was just overwhelming. And at the final exam, there was one girl who I, I wasn't sure I had ever really even seen her face. Once again, what we're going to do today in the period... To cope with the uh, influx of students, of the Montclair State has hired more teachers, you bring the, most the cattle, like Bill Lipkin. Um, the cows I'm a Rhodes scholar, because I'm on the road going from school to school. Lipkin is a part-time professor. Hey, good afternoon, class. Who teaches good six afternoon. classes at four New Jersey right. colleges, including Montclair State. You do that. Automatically Instructors automatically like him that. teach half of all college courses nationwide, up from 30% a decade ago. Vice president, basically, was a adjunct faculty, as they're called, help he colleges teach more students and save money. An adjunct gets approximately one-fourth to teach the same course as what a full-timer gets, which means you could have four adjuncts for the same price as one full-timer, and you're not paying benefits. I'm running, you know, at my age, running around uh, like, like a, you know, a lunatic to make maybe as much as a full-timer is making to teach one class that day. Are colleges the bad guy? Today, state's the bad guy for cutting the funding. State has reduced funding for education in the, in the current budget. It's not just New Jersey. 21 states have announced cuts in funding for higher education. 
35 states spend less per college student today than they did in 2002. But federal aid to colleges has increased over the same time. The chair of the House Education and Labor Committee, California Democrat George Miller, sees a pattern in the state's behavior. The states, in fact, are disinvesting in their public higher education systems. We increase the loan limits, we increase the Pell Grants, and they, they walk away and put the money somewhere else in the state. I think it's a game that has to stop. Cuts in state funds have led some public colleges to eliminate programs, lay off faculty, even reduce salaries. Montclair State has done some cutting. It's let clerical workers go, left administrative positions vacant, canceled purchases of new equipment and deferred maintenance. But so far, the university has avoided drastic cost-cutting measures. In fact, it's added academic programs, hired more full-time faculty than ever, and still balanced its budget. How? Well, like public colleges everywhere, Montclair State has a fallback position, another reliable source of money. Tuition. What's been happening with tuition? Tuition has been rising. As the state defaults on its, what I think is, obligation and responsibility to support public higher education, uh, that uh, piece of the support is taken up by students and their families. The shift, though gradual, is significant. In 1988, 50% of Montclair's financing came from the state. Tuition made up 17%. Today, money from students, not the state, provides most of the funds. I'd ask you to think about... Tuition and fees here total nearly $10,000 a year, double what they were in 2000. Similar increases are happening almost everywhere. And while declining state aid is one cause, colleges' spending habits are also contributing. For instance, across the country, public and private colleges alike have spent billions on new construction projects. Lacking state money, New Jersey's public colleges had to borrow to build. In the last six years, Montclair State borrowed $78 million for dorms, $94 million for a classroom building, but it also borrowed $98 million for gym renovations and a new student recreation center. A recreation center in tough times? Yes, that's a very interesting question. A number of years ago, the students came to me and they said, we need a recreation center. They may say they want it, but shouldn't you be the parent here and say, I'm sorry, that's indulgent? I, it is not indulgent. Students in New Jersey live in the densest population in the country. They don't feel healthy. They should have a place where they can work out, where they can do aerobics. This is not uh, a luxury. This is critical to a healthy life. To Susan Cole, the real problem is that New Jersey has been unwilling to pay for gyms or classrooms, forcing colleges like hers to borrow. We have a choice. We can say, we'll either let students come to this campus and study in chemistry labs that were built a half a century ago, or we will build them ourselves and borrow for it. But the cost of paying off those loans has helped make New Jersey tuition second highest in the nation, and that has serious implications for public colleges. You can ask the fellow who takes the tolls on the highway the guy who works in the 7-Eleven. You can ask your doctor or your lawyer, do you think your children should go to college? Everybody's answer will be yes. But over the long term, if the state continues to default, then we will have an impact on who it is that can afford to seek a higher education. It will change. Ultimately, it will change the demographics of the institution that's very dangerous for society. Who will be able to come in that future scenario? Those who can afford it. And everyone else? With the economy worsening, many states are predicting budget shortfalls for next year. Faculty can expect further layoffs and cuts to academic programs. Students can expect to pay more. You can watch our previous story about student debt and listen to podcasts 
featuring people profiled in both reports on our website. Just go to PBS.org, click on TV shows, and then the online news hour.